This is Everglades National Park, over one million acres of slow-moving river that's home to thousands of alligators, full of wetland foliage, and the place where I freaked out last year and left early after spending only three hours in the park. Thinking about heading back home. But one year later, I'm back, more prepared than ever, and I'm determined to see the Everglades properly this time. Well, after a very long drive, I am back here again at Everglades National Park to see if I can redo my trip from last year. And things are already going a lot better than they did last time, so I'm feeling pretty good about it. And I can't wait to get out there and see the Everglades for real this time. I'm obsessed with this camping toaster I got. I love toast, and it was paining me not to be able to have it. But this thing, perfect. <laughs> I'm unreasonably excited about this, yeah. <laughs> One of the biggest improvements this time is the campground I chose. Instead of staying all the way in Flamingo at the end of the park, I stayed at Long Pine Key, which is closer to the park entrance, making it way more accessible to all of the different trails and waterways. My first stop is the Snake Bite Trail, a short out and back path next to a lively bird filled canal leading to the ocean. That is wet. <laughs> so I've got these um, mosquito face nets. And uh, it feels like nothing's gonna stop the mosquitoes. But uh, what's one more thing, I guess? <laughs> getting closer to the end of the trail because the trail is getting worse and the birds are getting louder. <laughs> the end of the trail, I guess. So I'm gonna see what's beyond this bridge. much of a bird watcher, so from far away, at first, I mistook these roseate spoonbills for a flock of flamingos. Look, oh my god. I have 
have to correct myself slightly because it turns out those birds may not have been flamingos. They might actually be spoonbills, which can also be pink, but <clears throat> there were a lot of birds um, at the end of the trail. So definitely plenty to see flamingos or not. Wow, I definitely got disproportionately sweaty from that hike uh, because of all the humidity, but I took a shower back at the campground and now I'm gonna head to get something to eat at uh, a taco place that looks particularly good. While I enjoy my dinner, I have somewhat of a confession to make. I actually know Spanish, I took it for 12 years, and I understand it really well, but I'm out of practice when it comes to speaking it, so I'm always afraid of looking like an idiot. I wanted to order in Spanish here, but I was too cowardly to say a simple sentence. Maybe one day I'll finally get over it. I'm driving along the northern border of the park to get to the Everglades. Uh, there are a couple of things up here that I wanted to check out. And it also kind of seems like this is where all the gators are. So hopefully I can see a couple of those. Today is Saturday and it's so crowded here that I can't even get into the road that leads to this uh, particular trail. So even if I had gotten into the parking lot, um, it's uh, quite a while away to the Shark Valley Lookout Tower and you can't actually drive there. So I put my name on a wait list for a bike, but I'm gonna hike this trail in the meantime. And uh, if it takes too long, I'll, I'll just have to go somewhere else. As I walked around the short boardwalk, I felt like I had made the same mistake twice. How could I not have realized that Shark Valley was actually a seven mile round trip inland that was really only accessible via bike or tram? I had failed to plan properly all over again, but there was still time to turn the day around. Well, biking was not happening, so I decided I would just cut my losses and not get to see the Shark Valley Lookout Tower, but hopefully it means I can do something possibly even more exciting. This was one of my biggest goals for my do-over of the Everglades, going on an airboat ride. I thought it might be one of my best chances for seeing wildlife up close but as those 10 foot tall fans roared behind me, despite wearing the earplugs they handed out to everyone, I was starting to feel like we would just scare all the animals away. But I was so wrong.
know, I guess, what to expect, but that was really good. That was, that was amazing. I'm so glad I went on the airboat ride and um, I feel like I wouldn't have felt like I really did the Everglades if I didn't do that. So totally worth it. And the sun has come out, but it is setting. So I'm gonna head back to the campground. Good morning from my final day in the Everglades. And today is perfect weather to be on the water. So as you can probably tell, I am in a kayak. <laughs> a little crocodile right next to me. <laughs> Here he is. The American crocodile was once endangered in the 1970s, but with restoration efforts, those numbers have increased to around about 2,000. They remain classified as a threatened species, which means that getting to see one in the wild like this is still pretty special. It's pretty much time for me to head back and return the kayak, but uh, this was totally worth it. And I think it was a great way to put an end to my trip. But the Everglades had one last surprise for me. Just as I'm leaving the park, <laughs> I see this couple of cars pulled alongside the road and there's just a big gator sitting here, sunning itself. Hey buddy. Going. You doing good? It's a nice day, huh? <laughs> well, I feel like I gave the Everglades the time that it definitely deserves, and I have redeemed myself, so I can finally put on this pin that I have been holding on to for a year ever since I left last year. I'm not done with Florida just yet. There's still one more park left here for me to visit, and it's one of the most remote parks in the country. But that'll have to wait, because for now, I'm headed home. 